Well, hello, welcome back to Tail 3 Cabins. About four months ago, I did a video on this EcoFlow River 2 Max, and this was the go-to power station for me during hunting season when I was down in Southern Ohio. This is the one that I threw in my UTV, took it on top of the hill, powered some wireless routers up there so I could get some internet. And uh, it's worked out very well for me. When I did the video, it was pretty popular, but a lot of people in the comment section said that they were waiting for the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. But unfortunately, that wasn't out yet, and there was some delay with it coming out. But I can happily say that the Pro is now out. And you might do a double take and think to yourself, that looks almost exactly the same. But it's not. The River 2 series has three different power stations. So you have the River 2, which is significantly smaller, and that is 256 watt hours in battery capacity. Now, if you add another 256 to that, you get 512, and that is where the River 2 Max comes in. Now, if you add another 256 to this, well, then you get the Pro. And the Pro ends up being 758 watt hours of capacity. Also, there's some slight changes. You might not know it by looking at it. Let me bring the two side by side here. So this is the River 2 Max. This is the River 2 Pro. You'll see that the Pro is probably about an inch, inch and a half taller than the Max. That basically takes up the same exact footprint. It's just a little bit taller and the capacities are a little bit greater. Essentially, your outputs are almost identical except for your AC outputs. If you look down here, you have two three prongs and then you have two two prongs where you have all of these are three prong outlets on the bottom the first river series is probably going to get phased out eventually i think they're waiting for this pro to come out and then you can still catch some of the older river models but i believe the river 2 is going to replace those i would not look back at the old river series because these are far more advanced and they're actually a little bit cheaper they're a little bit lighter they're more capacity um, they just don't have the glitz that the old ones had so these are really all business compared to the old ones these have the lithium ion phosphate batteries in it so you're going to get over 3,000 cycles and close to 10 years of life these also come with a five-year warranty and it seems like a lot of power station manufacturers are starting to slowly creep over to the five-year warranty i think that just has to do a lot with competition once a couple of other ones start offering it then these folks have to offer it too so let's just talk about the outputs really quick to refresh your memory but there are three usb a ports here there is a USB-C port, which is capable of 100 watts. And you can also charge your power station off of that. So if you have a laptop charger with you, and let's say you forgot one of your AC plugs or a means of charging this, you could charge it off of that charger, albeit it's going to be a little bit slower, but you have that capability. Then you have your four AC plugs here. You have your cigarette lighter style outlet here two barrel connections 5521 barrel connections and basically pretty darn close to the max the introductory river series is a 300 watt inverter this is a 500 watt inverter with an x boost of 1000 if you remember i made some toast with the toaster with this it was able to power something that was higher than the 500 watt inverter and that's a nice feature when you use it properly this was capable of outdoing my blue eddy which is has a 700 watt inverter and that overloaded when i tried to make toast with it but this was able to make toast it was not able to make coffee though <laughs> so now this has 800 watt inverter with an X boost of 1600 watt. So this is a nice little jump because now I can make coffee with this in a pinch. And I tested it out on our larger Keurig in the kitchen and I hooked it up to the River 2 Pro, plugged it in, got everything all set, got the coffee maker ready, turned it on and was able to make a nice cup of coffee off of it. I did notice that it just showed 800 watts on the watt meter. So there is a little bit of stuff going on in the background here. What I believe happens with the X-Boost is that it reduces the voltage going into that device. So it's capable of running high wattage devices that don't have a compressor in it and does not have like a computer screen along those lines. I find this very nice though when you want to use high wattage devices in a short period of time. So making coffee, maybe a, a quick hot plate to cook an egg or something like that, a waffle maker, 
something that you know that you're not going to have on for more than uh, 10 or 15 minutes. This can be a lot lighter than lugging around a larger power station that can output 2,000 watts. And you've seen me review a couple of those. So this is a nice little jump if you're going camping, you want to make some coffee in the morning, you don't want to lug out a larger power station. To me, this bridges the gap between your smaller portable power stations and the big guy. If you're curious about the outputs of these ports, your USB-A ports, that's going to give you 12.6 volts at 3 amp, 36 watts maximum. The USB-C is going to be 100 watt. Your cigarette adapter here is going to be a regulated 12.6 volts, 10 amps. We go to the back, that is where all of your inputs are going to be, and it is very simple, just like the River 2 Max. You just have your AC input back here, and this is a quick charging. You can, you can manipulate how quickly you want to charge this through the app. You can download an app and control this via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and you're capable of charging as low as 100 watts off of this AC port and up to, I believe, 1,000 watts. So you can charge this in just a little over an hour from zero. Also included in the box when you open this up is going to be your car adapter that has the XT60 connection here on the right. This would also be your solar connection if you have solar panels. You are capable of using 220 watts of solar to charge this device, so that would probably do it in around three hours of decent sunlight. They recommend you use their solar panels. They do make a nice bifacial solar panel, which I think I'm going to be getting from them shortly. If you buy EcoFlow solar panels, they're pretty much tailor-made to give you the maximum capacity for charging the solar. They're bifacial panels, which means that they charge from not only the front-facing part of the sun, but they can also charge from the rear and give you a little bit more efficiency on the panel, and we could talk about that a little bit later. This is the AC cord that comes with it, and then they give you a barrel connection. I've paired both of these to the EcoFlow app, so you can control them. So if we go into the Pro part of the app, you can see that right now it's got a 92% charge. If I go to the output side of it, I can turn on the... AC outlets, I can turn on the DC outlets, and I can also shut those off, of course. If you come over to settings, this is where on the top here you can rename it. Your AC charging speed, right now it's set for 650 watts, but I can go all the way up to 940 watts and as little as 100 watts. So I always like that. I think that's a nice feature. Never really care for charging something at maximum speed unless you really need to. So if you're in a bind, you're going to go on vacation, you're going to go on a camping trip and you're leaving within an hour, you can pretty much charge this to 100% in an hour if you put it up at this 940 watt. If you're using your car charger, you can also regulate just how many amps you are putting into the power station, either 8, 6, or 4 amps. You can set how long the unit will time out if it's sitting idle. You can set it for 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, or never. If you have a DC refrigerator hooked up to it and that's going to be cycling off and on for periods of time, the power station won't automatically just shut off. You can also do firmware upgrades, and I've used that before. You can see your specifications at a glance if you're forgetting what the capacity is or what the uh, input capacities are. Just give you an idea. So if you think you're going to buy yourself a, a set of solar panels and you don't want to buy EcoFlows, you could easily come to here and see that uh, it's a 220 watt max. It will take a solar panel anywhere from 11 to 50 volts and a maximum of 13 amp. So that is helpful because a lot of times I don't have the manual around and maybe uh, I am looking at buying some solar panels for some of the other power stations in the pole barn here and you really want to make sure that you stay within the voltage and amperage range and you might have to do some finagling when it comes to putting them in parallel or series and we'll probably talk about that in a future video so i've had a little bit of experience with the pro and my experience with the river max and they're like i said they're essentially the same when it comes to the build quality it's very solidly built you have this handle on the back i like that it's flat on the top of this power station so you can stack them or you could stack something else when you're packing your vehicle up and not have to worry about a handle on the top making it a little bit awkward to put something else on top of it. The River 2 added much better technology inside, quicker charging, the lithium ion phosphate batteries, better battery management system inside for uh, temperature sensing, overheating, overcharging, uh, all that stuff is inside. These outlets put out 120 volts. Most power stations only put out 110. This is at 60 hertz. And, of course, it is a pure sine wave. 
I discharged the River 2 Pro from 100% down to zero. I didn't want to waste any energy, so I thought I would charge my power station and some other rechargeable batteries while I was making some waffles. So your mileage might vary, but out of its rated capacity, I got 85%. I also found a display to be very accurate, too, when it said that I had one minute left. It basically shut off with that one minute left down to zero. Some power stations are not that accurate when they calculate their capacities. So I plug the power station in and I'm starting with a completely 0% on the battery level, starting to charge, started my stopwatch, and we'll see how quickly we can charge this back. It took about 20 seconds to ramp up to the highest wattage possible for charging this device, and then after we reached the one hour mark here, you can see that the power station just clicked over to 96% on the battery. And then when we reached a full charge, we had one hour and three minutes on my stopwatch. So there's no exaggeration on their part for fast charging. So I touched on it a little bit earlier, but the X-Boost feature, let's talk a little bit about that. So I said there's 120 volts coming out and 800 watts of power coming out of those AC outlets. Let's test a few items that are higher than 800 watts. The shop bag sounds normal, it appears to be functioning normal at the hose tip here. And even though this is more than 800 watts, it's showing 800 on the screen. The circular saw appears to be running normal as I recall using a regular AC outlet. But let's show you what the volts are doing when we operate the shop back again. Instead of overloading and shutting off, what happens is the voltage gets reduced, but you're still able to use some of these high wattage appliances. Lastly, I'll use my compressor, which I know is probably not going to work well. No, oh, sounds a little sick. Not so good. So EcoBoost has its place and it does work well with certain appliances such as air fryers, microwaves, electric kettles, electric heaters, electric frying pans, and of course coffee makers. Testing the UPS functionality. Now EcoFlow doesn't consider it UPS, they call it EPS for emergency power supply. But they say it should be quick enough to not interrupt a computer, which is probably the ultimate test. If it's going to be like a refrigerator or some other type of appliance like that, it really doesn't matter if there is a little bit of delay. That refrigerator is just going to pick up where it left off and it's going to cycle off and back on. When I did the test last time with the River 2 Pro, somebody thought that they noticed that the battery was not at full 100%. And when you're doing this UPS test, the battery needs to be at 100%. So I do have 100% here. There's 41 watts coming in and 42 going out. So that's just what's being supplied by the AC power coming in into the device and then going right back out to the computer. So the battery is really not involved at this point. So now when I unplug this, if the computer stays on, we should be good to go and it should work as a UPS. And if the computer goes off, then the transfer is not quick enough to act as a UPS for computer devices. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna reach over here and just unplug the UPS and then make sure the screen is on. We're unplugged, no watch coming in. 59 going out into the computer. Looks like it worked. Let's try it one more time. 61 watts coming in, 61 watts going out to the computer. I'm going to plug it from the AC wall. And the computer keeps going. So this can work as an uninterrupted power supply for your computer. Now I mentioned earlier that the River Max was my go-to power station during hunting season. I think I found a new go-to. I like the slightly larger capacity and I like that this acts as a larger power station when you need it for those high wattage devices in a short period of time. Now there's always competition out there but I gotta say that this is probably the best sub one kilowatt portable power station that I've tried so far. 
So I'm going to leave some links below in the description. If there are sales or deals, I will leave links there also. I appreciate everybody watching these videos. Hope you enjoy and subscribe to them. Click on that little bell when you want to know when a new one is coming out. And uh, keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody.